it's all well and good sharing your pictures on social media for your friends to see, but sometimes you want to see your own pictures on your own phone. So I'm going to share some quick fire tips to take captivating lock screen photos. Right, this floor here I think is going to make a really good subject to appear on my lock screen for a, for a number of reasons. I really like the uh, arrows, the, the this herringbone shape on this floor. It's about 150 years old and there's lots of character in here as well. So let's see how I might take a picture of this. Right, so just framing up, this is the kind of kind of uh, context that I want. Remember that when you're shooting specifically for the lock screen on a phone, even though this is my viewfinder, my screen is much taller and narrower, so I will be cropping into this. So I want to give a little bit of room. What I'm focusing on is this, this chevron, is it a chevron? A herringbone pattern, these arrows that have a clear direction. Now the problem with this, however, is the shadow. You can just see on the right there the shadow of my hand and I, I kind of don't really like that. I've got a shadow on this side as well. And because of the lighting in this room, the lights are coming down from the ceiling. Wherever I move, I'm kind of getting those shadows and I want to find a way to remove those. So here's what you can do. This phone's got a zoom lens. Let's zoom in to twice the zoom. Now that's good, but now I'm too tight on my subject. Can't see a shadow there. So I'm just going to compensate by moving the phone further away. Now the good thing here is that because my phone is now further away from the floor, I'm no longer casting the shadow, yet I'm still getting the framing that I want with this, these arrows, this direction of travel in the middle there. So make sure everything's nicely aligned. I'm trying to get my point of the kind of top arrow there right at the top in the middle. And let's give that a go. And I think that, so you just nicely aligned through the middle, I think that with no shadows will make a really lovely lock screen. That's good. Right, from the floor to the wall and something else I think is going to work very well is this, is this radiator. These vertical tubes here I think will also uh, work, work quite creatively and interestingly on the, on the vertical of my phone. I've turned on the grid lines because I, I really think that having this true vertical is going to be important. Now some phones do have a, a level, a, a gyroscope and so on in there and that's all really useful. This house is 150 years old. Uh, I've no idea if any of the walls in here are straight. So actually using my eye and using the grid lines in the phone may well give me a slightly better chance of getting a true vertical shot. It's also about patience and just ever so slight deviation on the vertical of the phone can make a huge difference. Look at that, I'm only waving my phone by a few millimetres on that axis, but it's making an enormous difference, particularly to the top and the bottom of the image. So really use the edges, use these grid lines Take a moment to be as clear as you can about where your verticals and where the frame stops and starts. I think that's about there. Just move it over a little bit. It is about patience, this one, I'm afraid. There we go. Good. Now, when I was taking a picture of the floor, I zoomed in. I want to experiment with zooming out because I think the more bars that I have on my lock screen, the more, uh, the more interesting it's going to look. Now, there's a few things of note here. By going wider, what we get are more of these bars. And again, with a, a, a long lock screen, having more bars, I think, could be quite interesting. But notice, and this is, this is quite a quirk, Notice how the, the wide-angle lens distorts the fringes of the frame, how these, as we know in the real world of vertical bars, look as though they're kind of just tapering in at the top and at the bottom. 
Now, while I like that effect, what the phone is going to do, even though this is what it looks like through the viewfinder, I just try and line up again and take a couple of those. As we'll see in a moment, that these lens distortions are consistent because the lens is physical, the phone can correct those. So when we come to have a look at these shots taken with the super wide angle lens on the camera roll in a moment, you'll see that these curves, these distortions have been corrected. The, the phone has automatically compensated for, the, for those lens distortions and has made it all vertical. Now that's something I know this phone does. You might want to experiment with yours in case your phone does something slightly different. Let's see in the camera roll if the camera's been able to correct those. And here is that shot of the radiator taken with the ultra wide lens. And as you can see, the distortions that were apparent on the edges of the frame in the viewfinder as we were taking the picture have been corrected by this phone, like I say double check with your phone, your mileage may vary. But it's done a pretty good job of straightening up those edges. Maybe just a little bit uh, of uh, inequality at the bottom there, it still comes in, but that could equally be my framing as much as anything else. But we're looking at these to be used as a lock screen. Now lock screens don't tend to have the bars across the top and the bottom, they get zoomed in. So that is kind of what we're looking at, I think, something like that. And if I just center that up on the, on the little notch on the top there, and that looks pretty good as a lock screen. The other thing that you notice, particularly with a wide angle lens, is that it changes the perspective uh, compared to a telephoto or compared even to the kind of standard one times lens. You can just see the depth of these radiator bars. And by being in the middle on this center bar, here, you can just see the sense of perspective. I'm really pleased with that. There's a, a lot of mileage to be had in that as my lock screen, I think. Now, here is that same shot, but with the one time zoom lens. Okay, it's a little bit different because I don't have a, a center bar down the middle, but you can see how less there is in the frame there. And if I zoom in, I've now got that black bar down the middle. I, I quite like that. If I'm being hypercritical, I think I'm not completely straight. But when I'm zoomed in, and that is my lock screen, that is, I think, rather nice. What I particularly like about this one is that I get some reflections. You can tell that the radiator is just a little bit glossy. It adds some highlights, and I think that adds some interest as well. I'd be very happy with this as my lock screen too. Let's go down onto the floor and, <laughs> well, the first thing that I notice here is the shadow of my hand holding the phone. Let's zoom in though, and again see this more representative of what a, a lock screen on a phone might look like. And, well, it's not, it's not so distracting when you're at full screen, but I don't know, I, I feel as though I've lost the, the, the shape of the image that I was looking for, and that shadow is still a distraction for me. Remember that really I'm the only one who's going to be looking at this. Uh, and if I know that's my, my phone there, I, I probably won't be quite so pleased because uh, it's not the image that I was searching for. Nevertheless, I'm not too disappointed with it. It's surprised me in ways that maybe I wasn't expecting. And this is the shot that I had in mind by zooming in and stepping back, I've been able to kill that shadow and it's much more the composition that I wanted to. If I just zoom in and maybe just pull out a little bit, that's the geometric shape. Again, with that energy, these directions of the slats of wood leading me up to the top of the screen, they fill the screen beautifully. It feels nice and nice and true vertically and I think what's more, this is personal to me, this is, the, this is my flaw, and whenever I pick up my phone I'm looking at not only a really interesting image that I think will complement any text that the phone chooses to put on top, it's a very personal image as well. So I think that's the one I'm probably going to end up choosing.